And now I invite you to join with me in the responsive call to worship. Here we go. The response is, let us celebrate the good news of God's love. Let us come and worship, for we are an Easter people. Let us celebrate the good news of God's love. God has released us from fear and shown us that God is with us always. Let us celebrate the good news of God's love. Fear is replaced by hope and gloom is replaced by faith. Let us celebrate the good news of God's love. Let us join our hearts in prayer. God of life, be with us as we worship this morning. Help us to hear your word with fresh ears and new insight. Enable us to increase our faith in your continuing presence among us. Give us the strength to be your disciples, absorbing your love, but then reflecting it to others in all we do. We pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Our hymn is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you that you are with us throughout the journeys of our lives. Just as you were with Moses and the Israelites as they crossed the desert, just as you were with the psalmist in the joys and sorrows of life, just as you were with the grieving disciples on the road, so you are with us. But like so many others throughout the history of the Bible, we often feel alone. We do not always sense your presence. As we walk the dusty roads of our lives, as we feel confusion, anger, or sadness, help us to know that you are with us. Help us to recognize you just as Mary came to recognize you in the garden that Easter morning. We ask for your guidance as we live through a pandemic of gun violence. Help us to see all our brothers and sisters of any color or stage of life as your equally beloved children. Help us to spread calm in the midst of anger, to bring compassion to those who grieve, to be instruments of your peace. 
May we reflect your love and presence to those around us, especially those who are in deep need of your peace and your healing touch. We pray for those we know, even those worshiping with us this morning, who are ill, facing surgery, sad, or in any kind of need. We pray for those whose struggle is known to you only, and we ask that you keep them in your care. We thank you for all who give of themselves for the good of others. We lift up before you the leaders of our communities and our nation. We pray for the safety of police, firefighters, first responders, those who serve our country. As we are reassured of your presence with us on the road, we ask that we may be strengthened to be better vessels through which your love and your power may touch others. We pray in the name of Jesus, and we pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into your temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are so grateful to all who show their faith and gratitude by giving back to bring God's love to our community and beyond. We thank you for the offerings and donations we receive electronically through PayPal and Venmo with the information on our website, firstchurchstratford.org through EFT withdrawals and through the US mail. Let us pray. Generous God, you've given us many gifts and you've drawn us this morning into this community of faith. May the gifts of our talents, our time, our donations and our pledges support the ministries we carry out in your name. Amen. And now we'll hear from our choir. Make me an instrument of thy peace.
Our scripture lesson um, comes from the lectionary, from the Hebrew scriptures. Uh, we'll be reading Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are, when you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me to lie down in safety. I'd like to start by asking you a question. What happens when you close your eyes at night and, and attempt to go to sleep? Are you one of those who so easily just lays your head down and within seconds you're in a very peaceful, deep sleep? Or are you more like me? Uh, you go to bed, you're so tired and you're so exhausted, and you close your eyes and you just lie there. And you keep them closed, and you keep them closed, and nothing happens. So you open them up and you lie there and you lie there about an hour and nothing happens. You don't even think you have anything bothering you or on your mind. Sometimes you do, but a lot of times you're just awake. So if you're like me, you get up and you go downstairs and you make yourself a bowl of cereal or a big bowl of ice cream, or if you're really desperate, a big glass of wine. You try to read, but your mind is too tired to even read, so you turn on and watch mindless television. Uh, maybe a half hour info infomercial, or as one person put it, mindless channel surfing. As Gary Simpson wrote, we so desperately seek peace and tranquility as the darkness nestles us in a blanket of stillness. So, for, so many times, friends, our restless spirits and our churning minds just won't put on the brakes. The psalmist knows about this, knows about tossing and turning, and for good reason. David is speaking about a prayer in the night. And I must confess before I go any further that I have some biases when it comes to David. You see, David, on one hand, can be the most passionate person in the world for God and speak so deeply of his love for God. But then David can turn around and be one of the most violent and ruthless and unforgiving person you would ever want to meet. Uh, sometimes uh, it sounds like to me in the Psalms, it sounds like for me that David is either a self-righteous prig or someone filled with paranoia. Maybe he had reason for both. Many he trusted his friends had turned against him. But unlike Jesus' prayer on the cross when Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they know not what to do, David prays, get those evil sinners and pay them back twice, of what, twice as badly as how they've treated me. 
I remember a poster in college that said, maybe you're not paranoid. Maybe they are out to get you. I think that's a lot of David's life. As a young man, he was asked by King Saul to come and play the harp for him, to soothe the madness that was creeping into the life of this king. So he came to live at the king's palace. And, da and David came to love King Saul, and Saul loved David as well. He thought of him as his own son. But after David had killed Goliath, and his fame was getting bigger and bigger, Saul became jealous. And his paranoia set in. And at one point he would love David, and the next point he would hate him. Some damp times when David came in to play the harp in the evening as they were eating, Saul would pick up a spear and try to pin David against the wall and murder him. Can you imagine that? What that must have been like for David? What's tonight going to be like? I'm going in to play the good, to, to play the harp. Is Saul going to love me? Or is he going to try and kill me? Finally, David learned of a plot by Saul to capture him and to kill him. So he ran and he hid in the woods. And I think of that as I read this psalm, you know, um, of what could have been going on. How David could say, how long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? I could hear him going on and saying, I have done no wrong. Why am I being treated like this? You see, living in the Psalms, I believe, is living in the real world. Haven't we asked questions? The friends we live with? The people, all kinds of people. I've heard people acting like friends one moment and the next moment, moment turning on you. I've had people tell me stories of uh, being so, of, of a friend who just told them what a wonderful job they were doing at work. And the next moment telling the boss certain things so that that person could take that other person's job. If you live in a world void of adversity, you're not living in the world of the psalmist, and you're not living in the real world. Much of life is that balance between the hatred we see in humanity in so many different forms and the love of God we turn to. But I see a process here that I find informative for prayer in the evening and possibly for maybe getting a good night's rest. Let me start with the first thing that David does. David demands an answer. David is very honest with God. And that's the one of the things I love about the Psalms is their on honesty. David talks to God as we might talk to a teenager a teenage son or daughter who is ignoring us. He says to God, answer me when I call to you, O God of my right. It's not a plea, it's a demand. Like I said, honesty with God is very important. Yet, you can get angry with God because friends, God already knows what's on your heart. There's no surprises. And sometimes pouring out that anger and whatever is on our mind can be very cathartic. The next thing that David does is David remembers. I've come to believe that much of prayer and much of worship is remembering. Just think of the words of how we begin Holy Communion. We say, we remember. We remember the night on which he was betrayed. You see, in the midst of David's turmoil and anger, he remembers other times 
He, when he was in trouble, and he says God gave him room. And I love that term, God gave him room. Uh, when I was in distress, he said, you gave me room. God gave him breathing room. In the most difficult times of his life, God gave him room to escape, room to hide, room to, room to have a respite and to breathe when his life felt so constricted. Can you remember times in your life when God gave you respite or space, the ability to breathe during a very, very difficult time? The next thing that David does is something rather odd. David turns from speaking to God and he speaks to us. He exhorts us saying, when you are disturbed, do not sin. When I read that in the Psalms, I went, what? I mean, David goes from talking to God to preaching at us. But I'd like you to think about that. When you are disturbed, do not sin. How many of us have done the most regrettable things when we are angry? when we are afraid, when we are anxious, when we are overwhelmed. That night when you get out of bed because you're so angry and you go back in your room and you write that email that you regret that you sent in the morning. Or when you're anxious about finances and someone comes along and says, I found a way to make a lot of money quickly. And normally and nor you would look at what he said and see right through the scheme. But you're not in a normal place. You're afraid. And you're desperate. And you do things you normally wouldn't do. I read an article years ago about ministers who were caught and, or weren't caught or uh, confessed, whatever, uh, for sexual um, indiscretions. And it, the article went on and it said that most of these uh, ministers went on when, um, count, when in counseling and questioning to say that they were feeling the most isolated. Uh, and the most overwhelmed they had felt in their lives when this came about. So you can see uh, that David exhorts us that when you're in a bad place, don't do something stupid. Don't sin. It's great advice. And then David says, ponder on your beds. Look to God. Instead of turning on the TV or Facebook or Twitter or TikTok, turn to God. And then he says something again that's rather abrupt. He says, and then shut up. Or as he puts it, be silent. Yes, you can pour out your God. He's already said you can do, he's already done that. You can get angry with God. You can say to God, why can't I fall asleep? Uh, you can then share all that's on your heart, but after you're done, shut up. It's now God's turn. It's God's turn to speak to you. It's time to wait for God to respond. And maybe not in words, but as one of my spiritual mentors once said, God speaks to us in the deeps. I love that statement, in the deeps, in the deeps of your soul. It's there that the resurrected Christ will come to you as he came to those anxious, frightened disciples that night. And the thing that he said to them was this, peace, peace.
peace, peace, shalom, peace be with you, a peace that truly passes all understanding a peace that we, we, there is no reason in what we call reality to have. Not a, a peace that ignores reality or ignores the reality around us. In a world where people are flawed and we are flawed, we often fail each other and others fail us. And we often anger and we hurt each other. In a world where things simply aren't fair, where everything from our own worries come to the surface at night, crying out when we have enough money to pay next month's rent. Are they going to lay me off from my job? Is my son of color safe this night as he's out driving around? Will my, will my grandchildren live on a planet that is hospitable, I mean habitable, or will it be too late? But we come to God at night when everything has risen to the top and we say, answer me when I call to you. We share our troubles and we don't do anything stupid. And we trust and we shut up and we listen and we wait. I don't know about you, but when I was very young, my mother would come in at night and we would say our prayer, I would say my prayers with her. It wasn't the greatest prayer. Meg and I have talked about it, the actual words of the prayer, but it was always very comforting saying it with her. But as I grew up, I felt it was, I was too big for that. But a liturgy of prayer at night can lead us, or it's called, that liturgy is called matins. A liturgy of prayer at night can lead us to what David concludes by saying, I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me to lie down in safety. Would you join me now in the Common Commission? Let us go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord, until we meet again. Amen.